Spinning a moth is actually pretty simple. Um, you need a spreading board, and I do not have a spreading board. The purpose of a spreading board is there's a gap in the middle for the body of the insect, so you can spread the wings on a flat surface and tape them down and they will not bend or fold or collapse. So I cut a slot into my foam block used for regular insects. That way the body of the insect can sit down into the groove. Moths have a main vein that runs along the front edge of their wings. You need to very carefully stretch out their wing by tugging on that main vein, making sure that you're careful not to rip or tear or poke holes in the wings. The main wing needs to be perpendicular on the bottom edge of the wing to the insect. The secondary wing needs to be extended out so that the front edge of the secondary wing is sitting just under the back edge of the main wing. After you have the wings spread out in the correct position, you can use some regular paper or some wax paper and stretch it across the wings. And then you put pins through the wax paper, but not through the wings. And the pressure from the wax paper will keep the wings flat and extended and in the correct position. Make sure you're careful not to get the antenna under the wax paper. Very carefully move the antenna out of the way. Spread out the other set of wings in the same way by pulling on that main vein until the bottom edge of the wing is perpendicular with the body. And you want the secondary wing to be just under the back edge of the main wing. This side was a lot easier for me to spread out because it was the side that was closer to me. Once again, you want to use some paper or some wax paper to flatten out the wing and pin the paper so that way the pressure from the wax paper will hold the wings flat. I like the wax paper because it's a little bit see-through and you can see if the wings are moving while you're in the process of pinning the paper down and you can make adjustments before it dries. Make sure you're not actually pinning the wing, you're just pinning the paper on the outside edges of the wing. Now I'm just putting the antenna in a natural position. I had noticed that the tip of the main wings were 
curving upward. So I'm adding extra wax paper to flatten out the tip of the wing so it dries flat. You want to let your moth dry for at least 48 hours, maybe longer if it's a larger moth. The insect has dried for 48 hours and you need to carefully remove all the pins so that you do not damage the insect. Insects are incredibly fragile after they have been dried. So again, you need to be very careful. That last strip of wax paper slipped out of my fingers and broke off the last third of the antenna. Again, that's why you need to be very careful. Dried insects are very fragile. Now you need to insert the first identification label or the collection label onto the insect and use the middle level of the pinning block. The first level is for the insect, so all the insects are at the same level. You use the first level before you've pinned your insect for two reasons. If you use the first level after you've pinned your insects, the legs will break off. And second, as the insect is drying, it will basically glue itself to the pin and prevent spinning and falling down. And the very last level is used for the determination label. You want to make sure all your labels are running the same direction as your insect. And now you have a completed pinned insect.